For my template for my lantern, I'd like to have nice, even, thought out, and calculated designs. So for my first job is to measure out the sides. This is going to be a 5 inch by 5 inch box. I have gotten one of my geometry tools to help us be able to draw the design. Circles are definitely easier to draw with this kind of tool. Um, another thing with this is it's giving you a ruler so you can also measure out the spacing. When you create a design such as what is up here, you need to make sure that you're trying to um, measure out the space in between. The more precise you are, the better off. I'm going to be using a pencil just to mark out the different areas where those circles are going to go. One thing you have to remember, I have now created a little border along the edge here. I'm going to draw up with my pencil that little border. No designs can go in that area. Here's why. If you create a design that goes all the way to the edge of your box in this particular project, you he's assembling a box, you will find that if you're piercing the box in that area, you're going to be piercing through the seam where the two edges come together. So right now that probably doesn't make any sense to you, but the idea is, is that when you are assembling a box, that little area along the edge is a no-go because if you pierce that area or carve into it, you risk making the box fall apart. So I'm just going to make myself a little line along that edge so I know not to put any of my design there. So that means that if I choose to use circles as my design, what I'm going to do is use this just to help me lay it out. I'm going to make a couple of marks here. I'm just looking to see how many spaces I have. I really like the idea of being able to um, use this grid to help me make my circles. So every other box is going to become a circle. Now, this isn't exactly what the artist was looking to do for his project, but that's kind of my own twist or flavor of what I saw on his paper. All right, now I have centered this tool so that each time I am ready to make a circle, and this is the one I'm pointing to. Let me scoot this over. Each time I wanna make a circle, I'm gonna lighten it up with those little marks there. If you don't have those marks there it's very easy to accidentally make it in the wrong spot okay so I am right here at the 7 and 32 what I'm doing is making sure that it's centered and then I'm gonna make my circle okay it's a little bit off center so I also think I need to get a little bit bigger and go with a fourth of an inch I showed you that because I want you guys to know that that little detail does make a difference. So I'm going to move up to a fourth of an inch, which is what is on the graph paper, line it up, and make my circle. Now that's still not quite going to the edge. Try it again. There we go. I think that's a little bit better. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so now I'm going to lay out my design based on that one-fourth of an inch mark. That little circle there. And I'm going to start making my circles based on where it is on the graph paper, how I like the spacing, whatnot. If you do this hard work now, when it comes time to put that design on your lantern, you're going to get to use a regular Crayola marker. You're going to outline all your details, and then you're going to set it on top of your clay, 
and the ink is going to transfer your design from the paper to your clay. So you're not trying to figure out how to draw your design on your clay. You're going to use this paper with all these really nice, pretty measurements and transfer it right to your clay. So just to recap, what I want you to know is that graph paper can give you a much easier way of visualizing where the center is, how to space out your details, and how to lay out a design that's going to be symmetrical. Okay, what exactly is symmetrical? If I divide this right down the middle, and my design is on the same on the left and the right, that means symmetrical. Okay, so when you are working with your design, you want to, ideally, especially with what he was trying to do, he was trying to create a design in the center and along the four corners. So you need to know where the center is. You need to know kind of what spacing you have to work with, and then you create your design. One last thing to know, you do not, you do not want to create a design that isn't attached to anything. So for example, let's say I cut out a circle right here. And I just drew it on there, okay, just for really quick. And I wanted to make another circle right here. And then I want to make another circle right here. If I am making a lantern, I'm actually cutting those things out. What happens to these circles when I cut this one out? They're not attached to anything. If they're not attached, then they're going to be gone. They're going to fall right out. There's nothing holding them together. So if I want this little circle right here, he's going to have to be attached to the paper. Okay, so now I have him attached. What area is going to be removed? I'm going to shade it. Okay, so now I have shown you there's a precise way for you to measure out and create a design. Then there's also free drawing. Free drawing is not going to be neat and clean. So what I did right here does not look nice. It doesn't look perfect. And this is the time where you can create just one really good design and I'll allow you to transfer it right onto your clay. It's going to make your life easy. But you have to remember, you want to make sure your pieces are attached. If they're not attached, they're going to fall right off. I have another example to show you. In this paper, you can see the areas where the design is drawn out on with a ruler onto the graph paper. What you see is all of the areas where the design is going to be removed, it's shaded. Okay, you need that visual. That visual is very important to help you understand what areas you're taking away and what areas you're keeping. All right, that is the end of that demonstration.